Uh, hi everyone, welcome. My name is Chad Dawkins. I'm the Curator and Director of Exhibitions for the Southwest School of Art in San Antonio. Uh, I'm here to introduce you to a uh, juried exhibition here at Luca in Lubbock. It's called Town and Country. Uh, this exhibition is part of the Texas Painting Symposium uh, hosted by Texas Tech University that has been rescheduled for the fall. Uh, given the situation, everything was already here and is up. So, luckily, we're able to put together this video to show you. So I want to start by thanking uh, Guy Fromeau uh, at Texas Tech, Joe Ardano at Texas Tech, Linda Cullum, and all the staff here at the Louise Hopkins Underwood Center uh, for putting everything together, asking me to put together the show, um, and the symposium will be amazing once it happens in the fall. So I want to go through and talk a little bit about the work here in the show for you, give you a brief tour of everything. So first we have this piece by Catherine Allen. Uh, this is a uh, as you can see, almost photorealistic painting uh, where she comes through and chopped up the landscape in some way, and then we have this demolishing building. Uh, see, given that I picked this work in late February, early March, I feel like everything has a little bit different tenor than it did uh, then. This one definitely is still my first place choice for the show. Here we have Elaine Palowitz. Uh, this piece is just incredible to me. The flatness, the little cow, the way she treats the landscape, I think this is hilarious. I think it's a very uh, successful way of thinking about putting together a landscape. It kills me. It's great. This one, John Chen. Uh, John Chen, I've known his work for many, many years, decades. He's an amazing man. He makes amazing paintings. These things are tiny. They're glossy. They're super fine. Uh, the, the touches on them are just, I don't know, so refined and so delicate. It's great. The picture of a ruinous something out in the world out of the landscape. Next we have Haiti Cisco. She's from San Antonio. She does these paintings on paper. Uh, the economy of effort, the economy of uh, material speaks to the subject matter, which she takes from the sides of buildings, uh, hand-painted signs, all these sorts of things that we see in sort of architectural vernacular. I think that's sort of a common theme uh, throughout the show is what we can find just out in the landscape. But as you can see, these things are emblematic of what they would have been found on and the purpose in which that place would have served. But I love them as a set. Um, they're so uh, soft and gentle and, and yet just really worked. So I think that's a great one too. This huge piece is by Adam Farkas. Adam Farkas is in Texas Tech here in Lubbock. Uh, as you can see, large, Fabrics, or bed sheets, curtains, something like that, which says they don't speak for us. Again, now in April, it seems like everything, uh, the, the, the thinking surrounding everything has changed a little bit. Upon seeing this, it made me think of the, the time that we live in, protest posters, these sorts of things that we would see all around, which have become emblematic of the country in the last couple of years. Now it reminds me of a huge mask, for some reason, uh, walking in. But to me, it's a powerful piece, both in terms of scale, again, with the ingenuity, uh, the simple uh, facts of the, the, the fabric, and then this you know, wonderfully precise uh, letter work on it. I think it's a great piece as well. All right, now we'll move into a little bit of abstraction, a little bit of portraiture. First up, Anthony Garniger from San Antonio. As you can see, Anthony is recalling the, the fine tradition of, of abstraction and formalism in painting. Uh, doing these large sort of forms all together and pressed within this composition. Next to it is a little gem of a piece by Sean Campbell Boston. It looks like a gem. It's also so small, super precise, super crisp. It's really great, indicative of Sean's work. Here we have Emily Potts. This is a digital rendering of a sculpture that she had created previously. I like to think of this in terms of how one could construct digitally in the same way that one could construct uh, with a brush or with a, you know, a, a, a trowel or something like that. Lauren Yandel, this is another beautiful piece that's collaged together with different painted elements which then have been painted on, uh, on top of, and all put together again in this small, neat little package. Here we have Casey Galloway, also of San Antonio. Uh, Casey's working with these dyed, natural dyed fibers putting these together uh, into this uh, woven tapestry form here. Again, 
again recalling much of the history of abstraction uh, in a Western tradition. Here we have Jessamine and Potts. Uh, Jess's work uh, sort of messy interiors. You can see uh, boisterous brushwork really overriding on the, on the surface of the, the wood here, showing us the, the sort of uh, tumultuous inside of an interior. I think we can easily draw some metaphor from that. And we're all stuck inside now. Jane Cornish Smith, the weighty mantle. This is a, a woven together uh, piece of in, in, in caustic and new paper. Uh, you know, it looks like a big bathrobe. And you might want to get inside of it, become a part of it. It's soft, yet it's also somewhat off-putting because of its scale. It's a nice mix of all these different elements and composition, form, and then with the color. Next is Hannah Dean. I've known Hannah's work for a while, also using these small squares, working this 8-bit pixelation version of, uh, of seeing reality that we've all become so accustomed to, especially those of us born in the 80s. Here's Birthday Boy. It's a little boy here with his birthday cake. You can see it way better far away than you can close up. And next is Sky Rudin. Sky Rudin, uh, graduate of Texas State University in, in San Marcos. Uh, Sky's work full colors, uh, deftful rendering of the figures. You see here, it's almost like uh, something is being woven into this other figure's head. Very strange, there's some stars, almost indicative of a sky sitting out in this void. Lastly here on this wall, Rachel Black. Uh, Rachel Black here has a, um, given us a close-in portrait again of a birthday. Again, of a family gathering, again, of an interior. And what I think is most powerful about this piece is what we see in these eyes here and the, and the, the lack of gaze that's going on here. You know, the candles we know are going to be blown out, but someone is here doing something, someone's looking at someone else. It just really draws together all those elements that we see in a photograph, especially of something uh, of a scene or of people that we don't know. So there's the context between the familiarity and unfamiliarity I think resonates really strongly right now. All right, so last thing we have this piece. This is G. Jackson Tanner. <clears throat> what appears as a solid blue field or a somewhat mottled field is constructed of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands or millions of little pointillist dots of pure golden acrylic color. And so there's actually a mix of blue, green, white, red in here all working together to create something like we would see in the sky, as we know that the sky is not just you know, blue because that's what it is, it's the way that the light interacts with our eyes. The same thing is working here. Uh, I know Mr. Tanner to be uh, an art handler, a preparator, uh, one of these fastidious types of people whom I'm most fond of in the art world, and it, it comes through shiningly in his work that we have here all the way together. Again, harkening back to those traditions of painting over the last 120 years or so, everything, you know, through pointillism, impressionism, uh, up through hard abstraction, especially field, color field painting, I think can be found in this. So with that, I want to thank you for joining us on this short tour. Uh, I want to thank all the artists for submitting, and I want to thank all of you for watching the video. Thanks.